Hi friends, my name is Al or Lil Star Nerd. Welcome to another video in my 12 Days of Christmas series. So happy to have you here. I hope you're all having a wonderful holiday season so far. Today, we're working in my sketchbook. We're doing another character design Pinterest board challenge. This is where I ask you guys to create a Pinterest board for me with 10 to 15 pins that in some way describes a character. And then based on that board, I have to design a character that goes with it or is inspired by the board. I have a Google form that I sent out and I asked you guys for submissions. So I'm not taking, I don't think I'm taking them right now. If I ever do need more submissions, I will repost about that form through my Instagram story and my community page. So if you wanna send a Pinterest board, you wanna participate, look out for those. I'll ask for submissions when I need them. This time, obviously I asked you guys to send in Christmas or holiday or winter themed boards. Normally I have you guys just make a character theme, like whatever you want and give it to me and then I have to interpret it. But this time I wanted it to specifically have a theme going in and it was really cool to see how you guys interpreted that theme. There were so many different kinds of submissions. There were a lot of like ice queen vibe ones, lots of cozy classic Christmas, a wonderful, like there were so many cool boards, so many. I think I got like probably about 50 submissions before I closed the form. and. So many of them were just so, so amazing. So thank you if you submitted. I'm sorry if I'm not using yours. I might hold on to them for next year because so many of them are so good and I really, really wanted to use them. Before we get started, I also wanna say thank you to my patrons. Your names are on screen. I love you so much. You're amazing. Thank you for supporting me. If you also wanna support me a little bit more or you want some extra goodies, I've got exclusive videos, postcards, podcasts, etc. Stickers, prints, mail. Um, you can go check out my patron. It's linked down below. Thank you. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Ana Luisa. I've been wearing Ana Luisa jewelry for years at this point, and I absolutely love them. The quality is amazing. They have beautiful pieces. They last so well. And it being holiday season, it also makes the perfect gift. Here I have a few selections for my sister. I'm not wearing any of the pieces just because I'll be giving them to her. But I do have some of my old favorite pieces of Ana Luisa jewelry in currently. I have these squiggly ones in. You've heard me talk about these so many times. They're just my favorites. They're staples. I keep them in my ears all the time. And they still look brand new because because the quality is so good. Ana Luisa has affordable jewelry that looks beautiful. They have classic pieces, they have artsy pieces, they have something for everyone. I also love how Ana Luisa is so environmentally friendly. Obviously, all of the packaging is eco-friendly. They are also super transparent about where they source their materials for making their jewelry. And since 2020, they are fully carbon neutral, which is awesome. And of course, like I said, the jewelry itself is really high quality. These pieces are for my sister, and she's usually really, really sensitive to metals and often can't wear a lot of jewelry. She loves the Ana Luisa jewelry because it never bothers her at all. Overall, this is jewelry that you can feel really, really good about buying. So if you're looking for a gift to give to your loved ones, a little something for yourself, Ana Luisa really is the perfect place to look. Make sure you stay on top of their website because they have deals going on all season up to 35% off. They have jewelry for all sorts of occasions as well as pieces for every star sign. They have something for everyone's taste so it can make a really beautiful and meaningful gift. I'm really excited to give this stuff to my sister. I think it's perfect pieces for her and I know she's gonna love them. I really could not recommend Ana Luisa enough. Like I said, I've been wearing their stuff for years and I love it. It really lasts and it looks really nice. All of their stuff is classy, elegant, and fun. And I just could not be more impressed by the quality and also the care and attention that they put into everything they do. Like I said, don't forget to check out the link down below to check out their website. Keep an eye out for great sales and deals. And you know, maybe it's time to go shopping. Go get something nice for yourself, get something for a friend, a family member. Uh, it's really the perfect gift. Thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video and continuing to support my channel. I really love working with them. Uh, so thank you. But yeah, without further ado, I did the sketches. I love the sketches. And I'm very afraid because I have a gut feeling that I'm going to ruin them with color. I love the sketches, but we must do what we must do. So without further ado, let's, let's get into coloring. Let's go. For our first character, we've got a beautiful board from Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. This board seems to really highlight the Swedish festival of St. Lucia, featuring lots of traditional holiday garb and decorations, some vibey type photos, and a few pins featuring black women. I got quite a few boards inspired by St. Lucia celebrations and they were all stunning, beautiful, love it. But this one really spoke to me for some reason. For one, I love the emphasis on the textured hair and I wanted the chance to draw that. But the real selling point of this board was the pin of the geese mittens. I was so in love with those mittens and just utterly, obs I was utterly obsessed with them. Like truly, I, I love them. Um, and I just, I couldn't say no to this board, mainly because of the geese. 
A lot of the boards I received featured other cultures, other religious or cultural celebrations, and that can definitely be tricky because of course I always want to be super respectful and careful about avoiding stereotypes or representing a culture incorrectly or you know, in some sort of harmful way accidentally. I want to be accurate in my depiction of things like clothing because they often hold some sort of significance or are done in a specific way and taking creative freedom to change things around might end up like totally ruining or disrespecting the original idea, right? So I went back and forth on this character for a bit and remember everything I'm about to tell you is from super basic research online, not from any sort of official source. Like I don't celebrate this holiday. I'm not a part of the culture, so please don't take my word for anything. <laughs> but yeah, the thing is, the traditional outfit for Saint Lucia, or the person who is like specifically chosen to represent Lucia, usually a daughter like in a family, they traditionally will wear a white gown of some sort with a red ribbon tied around her waist with a wreath in her hair lit with candles. Any other girls in the procession also wear white gowns with the lit wreath. I think the only, I, as far as I understood, the only difference is that they don't wear the red ribbon and boys will act as star boys wearing these long cone hats with golden stars, carry lanterns or glowing stars on sticks, stuff like that. I love all of it. It's all amazing, adorable, I love it. But the thing is, those outfits are not particularly ornate or interesting as a simple illustration, right? <laughs> like when I'm, when, we're, when I'm doing a drawing like this in my sketchbook with marker, color pencil, it's gotta be visually simple enough for me to represent it on this small scale. And so like, you know, the outfits are just gonna be white. <laughs> so I risked it all and I took some creative liberties and I really truly hope that what I've done is in no way offensive. I don't think so. Like I did as much research as I could in terms of specifically like altering St. Lucia outfits and I didn't see anything and what I did alter, I tried to keep it within that same, obviously like within the same culture being believable. Um, but like, I don't, like, I don't know. I had the best of intentions, but please let me know if I messed up. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't see anything that implied that like altering the outfit or representing it differently would be improper, but I don't know. So what I did was basically not put her in a St. Lucia dress. Um, our girl is in a white gown with the large bell sleeves of that same traditional dress. And she has the red ribbon around her waist and is wearing wooden clogs as well as the headpiece. But I've also put her in striped socks. This is actually inspired by the Kirsten American Girl doll who is Swedish and celebrates St. Lucia and her outfit came with striped socks. Kirsten's my favorite doll, I'm obsessed with her. This is where most of my knowledge comes from about this holiday. The hem of her skirts is lined with stars to mimic the gold star imagery throughout the St. Lucia celebrations. She also has a vest on over the top of her dress, which is like where the main deviation comes in. I definitely don't think it's traditional to layer anything over the celebration dress. Um, and of course, on one hand, she is wearing those adorable, blue geese mittens. So here's like kind of the story I had in mind for her and why her outfit isn't proper in the moment. Like in this drawing, why is she not wearing the correct outfit? A little bit of a justification. I was kind of picturing her all like wrapped up in layers and layers on some adventure that day before the celebrations begin. Like in a coat and scarf with her mittens and like traipsing around in the snow all day. Maybe she was helping decorate or, or cook, or maybe she was going off on her own little adventure entirely separate. But she knew she wouldn't have time to go home and change, so she's put her St. Lucia outfit on beneath everything. And at the end of the day, um, or whenever, whenever celebrations happen, I couldn't find a time of day when the celebrations start. I'm assuming at night, because there's so much stuff that's like lit up or glowing. Anyways, she realizes she's running late, so she like runs to the church and everyone's already assembled waiting for her. So she has to like shed as much as she can, take her already lit candle from her friend and like join everyone else. It's very much giving American Girl 2000s movie, but I can see and feel and hear like so perfectly in my head. Um, I really love it. So yeah, the deviations from the traditional outfit have a reason in my head, but truly I wanted to keep to the intentions of the board and have that traditional garb, but I also wanted there to be meat and interest to this character besides just a, a white gown with no decoration. You know what I mean? Also, while I am trying to be a bit more creative with these character design challenges, like that's literally the point of me doing the challenge, um, I also wanted to stay pretty literal with this board. It's clearly about the St. Lucia celebration and I didn't want to bring any other random elements into the character just for the sake of spicing up the design. Like I didn't want to bring magical elements or modern elements or you know, you know what I mean? I didn't need to like change 
the story when the story is pretty clear. I don't know if what I'm saying really makes sense. Uh, but I, what I mean is, you know, I was trying to make this character as interesting as possible without moving too far from the board. So that meant having to change up some details, basically. In the end, I'm really happy with how this character turned out. She feels like a real girl with an adventurous spirit and a story to tell. And I love the way I drew her and the little details. I love little um, star things next to her. I really like it. It makes me really happy. But again... I don't know if I maybe did it a little improper, but I felt very limited. Um, I still wanted an interesting character and I'm, I'm happy with it. Next up, we've got a board from Avery. Thanks so much, Avery. This is a board that I loved at first sight, but I wasn't sure I actually wanted to do it for this challenge. I got a few boards that I could definitely tell were holiday or winter inspired, but they also didn't have any sort of like winter or holiday vibe at all. And this, this was one of them, a great example. I can feel and see the connection, but I definitely was doubting how well this would fit into a holiday themed video. You know what I mean? But as I was browsing all the boards sent to me, I kept coming back to this one and the boards similar to it. I just loved like the very different perspective on something that is so often interpreted in a very specific way. I love seeing all the different takes on this same prompt from everyone. Everyone had so many different ideas and perspectives and it was so fun and interesting. And you know, here was one that was so unique and different and I just, I really loved it. I was really drawn to it. And of course, like just on its own, it's an incredibly beautiful and haunting board. I just recently watched Midnight Mass and this was, this was very much invoking that for me. And I feel like it really does have this feeling of winter in that kind of dead, lonely, cold way. I just loved it so much. And in the end, I could not resist including this board in the video. As for the character or the girl herself, the Angel herself, it was pretty self-explanatory. The board includes lots of images of this woman character, almost like a woman in white, long and wavy blonde hair and a white flowing gown. While I know I can deviate from the boards, right? Like that's definitely, I make the rules, it's definitely an option. This bit felt pretty insistent to me and I wanted to keep to that. Like it was pretty, pretty spelled out what kind of she was supposed to look like in the boards. And I, I did like that idea. So I kept with that. But as for the rest of her story, I think the obvious interpretation of this board is that she's an angel, right? Like that's, I, I don't know if anyone else is interpreting it differently, but that's what I immediately thought of. But this board also includes this feeling of desolation, isolation, sadness, darkness. There's a vibe of an unhinged woman trope, this feeling of confusion or craziness. When soaking in the board and kind of letting myself brainstorm, I pictured this young woman lost and alone, wandering and constantly being led astray, not being able to trust herself or her perception of the world. I pictured frostbite and seeking shelter in some liminal space church, large empty houses with remnants of a lost time, and something dark watching from the corner, always creeping in at the edges of your vision, but you can never seem to like really see it. So I had this idea of a glitched angel. She's fallen for some reason, but probably not by her own actions or choice. And she's desperately trying to get back home, but someone has clipped her wings and is keeping her chained on what appears to be earth. Her memory is hazy. She doesn't know who or where she is. And despite her kind and loving soul, she knows she can't trust anyone. Despite her best efforts, there's some dark entity that keeps entrapping and infecting her. And she is slowly becoming more and more corrupt. She's causing destruction everywhere she goes, unwillingly and sometimes unwittingly, 
causing her to seek shelter in these strange, abandoned places or stuck out in the cold snow. The harm she's causing is everywhere from terrorizing humans with her alarming figure to accidentally destroying buildings or harming animals. I also picture her as being like at least nine or 10 feet tall and just being like otherworldly, like visually obviously not fitting in. Her wings bust through windows when she opens them on reflex. She tips over candles and sets whole streets on fire. And sometimes she's tricked into destruction by this dark entity. She always has the best intentions, but is so often steered wrong and causes horrible messes. There are increasingly alarming signs of her corruption. The bottom of her gown seems to be rotting away, frostbite is setting into her many fingers, and the tips of her halo, which is a source of light that kind of comes from her head, so her hair kind of like visually blends into it, are turning black. The feathers of her wings are falling out and are constantly in disarray and are often harmed and bleeding from being banged around when she's tucked inside a too small building. And of course she has many eyes and arms, which is simply how an angel looks. I picture her in a really weird in-between liminal time. Like maybe she's not actually on earth at all, but trapped in some nightmare version of her own mind of what she thinks earth is supposed to look like. Again, very inspired by Midnight Mass. I'm picturing a world and landscape that is very old Europe, small villages with horses and farms and homesteads, tiny communities with tiny churches. But here and there, seamlessly blended in despite how wrong they are, are bits of modern or semi-modern world. I think the board has a bit of a 90s nostalgia to it, so sprinkled throughout this wintry world she's wandering across are small houses that inside are huge Victorian-esque mansions filled with those large 90s box TVs and blank VHS tapes and TV static, endlessly ringing corded phones, flickering electric lights and toppled furniture, giant old computers at work desks. Things seem to glitch in and out of sight, change shape in front of her. A picture frame becomes a TV, becomes a window, and then a TV again. But did she imagine it? Maybe she wasn't paying attention enough. She falls asleep in the pews of a church and wakes up on a bench outside. But she can't remember entering a church last night at all, so maybe she just made it up. I think her story probably would logically take months, as she travels miles and miles across this endless landscape, walking as she's unable to fly. But in this liminal space, time is like liquid. So really, who knows how long she's been traveling. She prays multiple times a day to a god she knows exists but must not care about her because no one seems to be listening. She runs from this dark entity, sees it disguise itself as giant beasts that stalk her through forests, as people who offer her comfort or a place to stay but later turn on her. She's stuck in a world that is afraid of her, that isn't made for her, but no matter how far she walks, it never seems to end. There is no escape and no one is coming for her. She has no idea where she's going, what to do, or how to save herself whether or not the things around her are real, whether or not she's real. While I think objectively the character design here is a bit weak and obvious and easy, I am personally obsessed with this story or like world idea, so I'm very, very satisfied with how this character came out. I think it was a really great board, and this is one of the reasons that I just like love this challenge so much and why I'm so happy to keep doing it over and over, is it really forced, like just seeing the boards, like this is the way that inspiration like strikes for me. Like I've definitely kind of learned that about myself through this challenge is like, it's just seeing these boards, it's like a wealth of inspiration that just does not stop flowing. And I think that's evident with this character. Um, so I really, really enjoyed this one.
Now we've got the board made by Kyle. Kyle, congrats, you've done it again. Raise the bar for all of us. I mean, talk about an amazing board. Like evil, evil Christmas? Shut up, you, like you win, you win. I was eating up absolutely every single one of these pins. Like I had no idea what direction I even wanted to go because every pin was so freaking good that I wanted to like base the character off of like all of them individually. I, I still can't get over how good this board is. Like I could look at it forever. So yeah, the second I saw the submission, I knew it was going to have to be in the video. Like there was no question about it. I also knew that I really wanted to have fun with this one. Most of my characters have been humans or humanoid. Uh, at most they like just have wings, right? <laughs> so I really wanted to do something more non-human. And this was of course the perfect opportunity. I wanted to do something very beastie, but I didn't want to go like straight Krampus. I, I wanted it to be a little bit original. I think it's impossible to avoid the Krampus vibe, especially because I was going beast. So I wasn't, I wasn't anti Krampus, but I didn't want to just draw Krampus. This board also wasn't like as spelled out and specific as the two previous ones. Those ones pretty much told me what the character was supposed to look like. And I was doing more of the piecing it together and coming up with a story. This board is mostly vibes. Like there are definitely some pins that are great inspo for what this character could look like, but mostly it's all just generally creepy. So I had to think for a while. I wanted the character to look vaguely Santa-ish. I love the idea of an evil Christmas, like an evil version of current Christmas. Not something separate from Santa and Christmas that happens to be evil, if, if that makes sense. So I wanted to keep the red and white suit. I wanted him to have the rosy cheeks and the beard but I, I did want him to be evil and not just evil Santa either. So I guess he's like a Krampus Santa hybrid love child. <laughs> he's got the signature Krampus horns, which definitely felt like a must have based on the board. I also like the idea of him being, again, not actually Krampus, but some kind of beast. So he doesn't have just a beard, but this long hairy fur around his whole face that goes down his back and is shaped into a slightly curly mustache trails into like a gross stringy beard. The hair or fur or like whatever is all over his body, of course, trailing down into his hands and fingers, which have like these gross dark claws. Honestly, the outfit is a major afterthought. I'm not sure why I dropped the ball so hard while sketching it out. I think I just wanted to keep it like simple and manageable. It wasn't until after I was like halfway through coloring that I kind of even realized how boring it was. And I had thought like, you know, it'd be really cool to see some sort of animal legs down here or a suit that has pockets stuffed with bits of children or, or coal or something, right? I think I could have gone really hard with, with props and vibes and elements of the outfit to help tell the story. I think I also wanted to avoid the Krampus look with the hooves. So that might be why I wanted to cover his body. Like I said though, I think the main reason was to simplify so I didn't have to figure out like beast anatomy. But yeah, I think I really lost out on a great opportunity for some fun storytelling elements and more interesting character design. So that's a bit of a bummer. And I, I really don't remember like why I was just okay with him wearing a block of color. But I also did want to spend a lot of time on his face. Like I said, he has his horns and long pointed ears. I wanted his skin to kind of blend into the fur with only that small section being hairless. He has long furry eyebrows and small beady red eyes. He has those really rosy cheeks and a long grinning smile with like a long forked tongue, which is also some Krampus influence. At least I don't know if he has a forked tongue, but he definitely has like the long sticky eddy tongue. Um, and throughout his hair or fur or whatever is like streaks of gray. I also really wanted to include the visual from one pin of a young girl's legs sticking out of the mouth of a giant Santa face. That was one of, for me, the most influential pins on the board. I loved the visual. There really is something very insidious about it, but also like seeing her, you know, poofy, frilly checkered dress and her Mary Janes kicking is such a funny and like vintagey vibe. Uh, I just loved it. I really wanted to include that element. So I added our evil Santa creature dangling a little girl upside down by her ankle. 
Why is he holding her like that? Who knows? Don't know what his goal is. Maybe he's kidnapping her. Maybe he's punishing her for being a bad girl all year. Like, I don't know. Didn't put that much thought into it. But I really wanted to add the visual of the legs going crazy and the frilly dress being upside down. The effect isn't great in the drawing um, because I, like, I didn't use a reference and I really liked the vibe of the very fast doodle I had done for it. So I tried to kind of copy the doodle, but of course this time it needed like a higher level of detail and I think it's clear I had no idea what I was doing anatomically speaking, um, so it was a bit of a mess. But I do think it's fun and adds kind of a layer to the character. As for like who he is and like what his story is like, I don't know. Obviously this board or this challenge is a little bit different because it's very specifically themed. So some of these characters, like especially this guy, doesn't necessarily have like a storyline or a backstory or a personality in place. It was more about the design itself this time. But I still really like the way it turned out. I think it's fun. I do really like his face. That's where I really wanted to focus my energy. And I think it turned out exactly the way I wanted. So I'm happy with that. But yeah, if anyone wants to pitch like ideas of like who this guy is and what his motivations are, what his storyline is, feel free. And finally, we've got this gorgeous board submitted by Zosia. Another board that I loved right away. But it was one that once again, I wasn't a thousand percent sure it would make the final cut. The pins all felt a little bit discordant and like it might be hard to really pull them all together into a well-rounded character. There was an obvious fairy tale influence, Polish influence, but there were a few pins that felt really significant. And I, I just wasn't sure how to make them fit. But this was another board that I just, I kept coming back to. I loved it so much. I loved the vibes. So many of the pins were so wonderful. Um, I just kept coming back to it. I couldn't set it out of my mind. And finally the deciding factor was the adorable bunny in the red cloak. I researched a bit about Polish folktales and mythical creatures. And I thought maybe I could kind of insert this character into an existing creature, but retroactively. I had already figured out what this character would be. But honestly, the popular mythological creatures are very specific. So instead of trying to shoehorn her into an existing category, we'll pretend um, that she kind that there's a there's a different you know she's a different creature in Polish folklore. Obviously, I'm not pretending to actually create a new mythological creature, but like we're we're inserting her into that narrative in her own category. Honestly, I think she does fit in really well with the existing creatures, like the Lady Midday, Kikimoras, um, the Stitska, Stitskas, uh, Ruslakas, I'm sure I butchered all those words. A lot of the creatures seem to be feminine figures that cause mischief or misery, settle themselves in one place, and seem to interact with humans or the community nearby, like, semi-frequently but I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, let's talk about this character's design before we talk about all of that. The main inspiration, of course, was the little rabbit ornament. Love that pin. It's probably gonna haunt me for the rest of my life how much I love it. So our character is some sort of rabbit creature with large ears on the top of her head, a rabbit nose that dips down into her mouth. She has slightly glowing red eyes, mimicking the red eyes that I think white rabbits have. Frankly, that's where the similarities end, uh, but if I were to develop this character like further as a slightly more authentically Polish mythological creature or even just pushing design further, I think it would be fun to emphasize the rabbit traits. A strange body that's somewhere between human and bunny, fur running down her back, strangely shaped face, stuff like that. 
But uh, for this challenge and this illustration, I was definitely going more for like the cute little fairy tale vibes than being interesting, you know what I mean? So she's got the same red cloak. I added like this large star pattern to spice it up a bit. I also gave her the head covering, I believe it's called a chusta in Poland. I wasn't looking at the Pinterest board when I started coloring and I remembered I wanted red because the cloak was red and I, I knew I wanted red somewhere, but I wasn't sure where. So on autopilot, I started coloring in the chusta red and then went to pick up a marker for the cloak and I was like, hmm. So what color is the cloak supposed to be? Because I thought that was red. <laughs> I panicked a bit and I tried to pick up as much of the marker ink as possible, but then it started bleeding into our face and I, I was freaking out. I think I ended up saving it with colored pencil, but I wasn't able to add the patterning and detail to the chusta that I had wanted. It ends up basically like a plain yellow brown, but just imagine it as a much more vibrant yellow with intricate red and blue and green floral patterns. Okay, do me a favor. There definitely seems to be like a, when you research them, there definitely seems to be a, a typical kind of look to them. And what I have here is not accurate. I definitely wanted to keep the large bow tying the cloak together like the rabbit ornament has, but I wanted it to stand out a bit. So that ended up blue, just vibes, I guess. Then the rest of her outfit is inspired by traditional Polish outfits as seen in one of the pins on this board. Intricately stitched corseted vests, vibrantly patterned skirts and an apron. The shoes and socks are a bit of a guess, to be honest. Again, kind of influenced by my Kirsten American Girl doll, who, who is Swedish, not Polish. But I thought these striped socks and the brown shoes kind of matched the vibe and were a safe bet. She's holding a sprig of leaves and berries reflecting one of the pins that has a bushel of straw. It, for some reason, really stands out to me on the board. I don't know why. Um, but I also, I couldn't really picture her just holding <laughs> straw. So um, she, I, I changed it to leaves, which I like. I like the look of. She is accompanied by two little creatures inspired by one of the pins that shows an illustration of a little kitten holding a weird creaturey doll in its mouth. I don't know what the doll is. Um, and then there's another pin showing many characters from folklore in a very specific style and it's giving creature. Um, and I really, really wanted to kind of include that element. I thought it would be really, really fun. So there they are. So now let me tell you about her story. I picture her as essentially a mythical creature that lives in the woods outside villages or towns. And now that I'm saying this out loud, I'm realizing that is a major theme for me. That is, a, a lot of my characters have been doing that very specifically so far. Interesting. Anyways, during warmer seasons, she often stays deeper in the woods to avoid wandering children, travelers, hunters. She has plentiful sources of food, entertainment, and so she doesn't really have much need to leave. She mostly comes out at night to wander around and cause a bit of mischief. Maybe tapping on windows, pulling out plants from gardens, stealing things from windowsills, minor stuff like that. However, during the winter, as normal animals start to hibernate or pack it away for the winter, plants stop producing berries, etc, etc. She becomes bored, lonely, and hungry and becomes much more active in the villages. While she's not necessarily evil, villagers are definitely afraid of her. She, you know, she's not human. Um, and she's definitely like a mischievous nuisance at the least. And there might be myths that she's lured away children a few times here and there to eat them, make it through especially hard winters. Is that actually true? Or something mothers tell their kids to keep them from wandering and getting lost in the woods? Who really knows? I can't decide how morally wrong I want her to be. I like the idea of her kind of being a bit chaotic and it might like change depending on her mood. Maybe sometimes she lures away children as playmates, other times to eat them, right? Maybe sometimes she finds already lost children or other travelers and helps them find their way home. Or maybe if she's like not feeling so kind, she, you know, she keeps them for herself or, or leads them on a wild goose chase or chases them through the woods or something like that. I'm not super sure on all the details. I really like the look of her and I think she looks really sweet and innocent. And I think that could be an interesting juxtaposition to her being mischievous and slightly evil. But also there's a part of me that is not willing to commit to that. So I don't know. I don't know all the details. Um, let me know your thoughts. But anyways, um, she does live in like a little tiny kind of handmade, maybe like clay cottage type thing, deep in the woods with all these weird little creatures as her friends that dutifully follow her around. I definitely picture them like literally they just follow her. It's kind of like empty sock puppets, like soulless sock puppets or something. They're like her kind of her only real companions. I think they, 
have a bit of a soul, as in they're like nice and compassionate to her. But I, maybe the, I think they're kind of like things that she made, sewed as dolls, and they kind of magically come to life. And that's why they're so weird looking. Um, so I think they're her friends, but like they don't talk or like do anything. They literally just follow her around. <laughs> but like as for her purpose or what she's like looking for, what she does, I'm really not sure yet. Again, let me know if you have any ideas. But I am, I'm frankly obsessed with how she turned out. I love everything about this character. From, I love the initial sketch, the really messy sketch that I did, all the way to the final illustration. I love every bit of it. I think she's really cute, and I'm just really, really happy with her. She's definitely probably my, my favorite. I feel like I don't love them as much now that they're colored. Like I liked the sketches more, but I'm not mad about it. I don't hate them. I still think they're cute. They're doing what they need to do, right? This one, I feel like I went a lot more like, I didn't go as much posy. Like I feel like I've been trying to do like a different pose each time. Like the last one, I really try to keep it like diverse, but this time I really wanted to show what the characters were wearing. Even her, it was literally just all of them gonna be kind of standing face forward with their hands in front of them in some way. Um, so I tried to make her different, but most, they're all kind of in the same position. But I think that's because most of the storytelling is done in their clothing and you kind of needed to see that. I also didn't really use references this time. I did like a little tiny bit. Um, normally I've been like finding or making some sort of pose reference for these, but for like these, especially um, these three, there's no pose reference with six arms. <laughs> there's no giant beast man. And this one was just so easy and specific and I knew what I wanted. So I, I just kind of did them all for my imagination, which was a fun exercise. I feel like these challenges are definitely forcing me to be a little bit more original and creative and step out of my comfort zone and even just, you know, stray from reference. So that's awesome. I also try to be a lot more fun. Like I said, I didn't want to just do people. Um, there were so many good boards and I, I they're definitely all <laughs> very humanoid, but I tried to have a little bit more fun with it and I'm really I'm really happy with it and I like that they're not all just like Christmas 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 I think they look definitely holiday ish but also like not too obvious right um yeah I'm really happy I had a lot of fun I hope you guys enjoyed if you did like comment subscribe the whole shebang you know what to do I'm gonna leave you there um we've done our sketchbook work for the day it was really fun it was really nice and now it's time to get out of this sweater <laughs> I hope you guys are having a wonderful winter season so far go eat a sweet treat check out my patreon and go do smart. Bye. See you later. See you next time in a few days. <laughs>